the humble beginnings begin, on this grassland. I already had ambitious plans, which include getting the Draconic Abilements, the most powerful accoutrement in existence. The game starts off as usual, with me getting decent equipment, getting Eyes of Ender, traveling to the end dimension, and slaughtering the dragon. But if you look closely, you may have noticed something idiosyncratic. The island is inhabited by molecules known as Draconium, and the dragon relinquishes its vital organs upon death aka the dragon's heart. These two resources allow for momentous amounts of gaming. After bringing them back to the overworld, I set up a base near the end portal since I would be making many trips between here and there. And in this base I shall begin working towards the technology known as fusion. But just like in real life, this requires exceptionally commodious assortments of resources, which I got from mining at the beginning of the game. Not only that, but it consumes electricity on cosmic proportions. The best energy source currently available is the Sterling Generator, which I concocted. With this, it will simply take 4 whole days and 12,000 coal to engender the awakened Draconium, which is required for everything later in the game. But what if I told you, that the Sterling Generator behaved like sand because it obeyed gravity? And as some of you might know, things that fall, can be duplicated. After doing a bit of research in the field, I came up with a genius dream high IQ plan, which gave me enough riches to build this. Behold, the unnecessarily loud Sterling Confraternity. Now how exactly does all of this work? First, allow me to explain the Sterling Generator do. It involves kidnapping the dragon egg, destroying the eggs at gateway with the aforementioned egg stuffing coal blocks into generators, and launching them into the eggs and gate away with this slimy piston. This leads to sterling generator mitosis for some reason, with twice the generators showing up on the ground and in these hoppers. I also used science ender chest technology to transfer the duped generators back to the end to create an infinite cycle of sterling generator life. Better yet, all the aforementioned generators had the coal I put in them and were still running. After getting a reasonable amount of generators, I placed them here to run for the rest of eternity. But these generators were quite useless without cables connecting them, and making 1000 cables manually was simply intransigent. The solution to this issue, is the crafter, which is a crafting table that allows you to keep any item in it. But it also behaves like sand. You can probably see where this is going. Behold, the crafter complex which I exploited for gratuitous substances. The crafters used to do items had no other place to go after fulfilling their purpose, so this base had basically become a massive crafter retirement home. On the other side, the generators were now all feeding into this energy storage, which now currently had tens of millions of energy units. I then stuffed the energy storage into this crafter, and basically duplicated multifarious energy. I then attached the new capacitors on top of the old generators, capable of powering the base for basically infinite amounts of time. Now for the next ingredient for Draconic equipment. A wither farm. Not this ridiculous vanilla farm though. Because I have a genius or farm idea. I was going to make the withers fight the guy known as Chaos Guardian. The ridiculously powerful final boss of the game. While it might kill me, they can kill wither for me. So technically economically it is a wither farm. So I got to work. First I created this commodious wither skeleton farm. Which is made of these machines known as the powered mob spawner, instant mob killer, and household vacuum cleaner. All made from other technological innovations I have created such as the After witnessing mass wither hecato, I determined that all this was actually unnecessary because I only needed three skulls for my wither farm. Because I obtained the enchantment known as Reaper. Here is how the Reaper works. In this game, spawners do not simply vanish into thin air when broken. They become souvenirs. And this information had quite a few interesting implications. I summoned and trapped the wither under the exit portal and proceeded to abjurgate and harvest the wither's soul with the enchant. With a broken spawner, a few extra endograms, and a wither soul, I can make a stabilized spawner, which spawns withers for free every few seconds. 
And what better place to spam withers everywhere, than inside the center chamber of the deleterious Chaos Guardian Island. So here is the plan. After a perpetuity of time, I have finally bridged to the Chaos Guardian Island, which was about 10,000 blocks away from the center. And with me I brought ridiculous amounts of dislocators, which are basically checkpoints that allow me to teleport back in case I die. Above the usual end terrain is a bubbly mixture of dandruff and obsidian, where two donut-shaped end crystal formations were reinforcing an enraged person that was ready to kill on sight. And the goal is to somehow dodge him and infiltrate the chamber inside the center of the Chaos Island, where I will precipitate all my withers. However there were also extremely valuable Chaos Crystals in here, which the dragon was guarding. Hence the name. The Chaos Guardian flew at the speed of LEP maximum electron speed, making it impossible to attack. It also spat out homing balls that come in different flavors. Rapid fire fireballs, and slow but equally deadly extremely deadly balls. Even the Guardian wasn't safe from its own attacks. These checkpoints were already being spam used as I went deeper into enemy territory. After a painful amount of attempts, I infiltrated the middle of the Chaos Island. But since this was made of obsidian, I had to die to reappear at base to get some efficiency and chance, and return to dig towards the center of the island. After a painful climb into the chamber, I finally set up the Wither Farm, and I took cover behind the Chaos Crystal. Then I realized that hiding is for time males. My existence was luring the Chaos Dragon towards me, so I stood next to the Withers and waited. Suddenly, the Chaos Dragon plowed through the Wither Association like a freight train, disintegrating their health. As expected, these Withers were now attempting to get revenge on the Dragon and tried to escape the kill chamber, when a bunch of dark fireballs entered the room and instantly killed most of the Withers. Then I collected the suffering of multitudinous withers for my personal gain. After rinsing and repeating this, I walked out with a profit, of 133 nether stars. Meanwhile at base, these draconium, gold and diamonds create draconic cores. A crucial part of draconic economy. And by adding a hint of nether stars, they are upgraded to wyvern tier. With all this opulence I then invented, fusion crafting. After attaching a profusion of capacitors to the fuser, putting in the delicious ingredients including the dragon heart, and waiting some amount of plank seconds, the awakened draconium was born. I had basically beaten the game now. Now for the moment you have been waiting for. The draconic equipment, the bow, and the staff of power. These draconic equipages run on power instead of durability, and when charged, they basically give you hacked client features. Creative flight. Night vision. Mach 1 speed. An energy power shield. And much more. The bow is basically a machine gun. But if necessary, it can become a miniature thermonuclear munition machine gun. But that was overly exorbitant. Last but not least, the self-explanatory staff of power. It acts as a shovel, sword and axe combined with a nuker and with the range of 6 light picoseconds. But I am not done yet. Everything can be bigger and better. I can spend eyes of ender, emeralds, golden apples, and blah blah blah, to obtain significantly higher reload speed, range, shielding, energy storage, and damage. With all of this, I was ready to have a rematch, with the Chaos Guardian. I returned to the lair of the Chaos Guardian. What happened next is based on a true story.
the shoplifting of the chaos crystals caused the entire island to destabilize, costing me a substantial amount of shield energy. But there was no time to fix that. The chaos crystals contained the secrets of the cosmos and consequently the most overpowered equipment in the game. These chaos crystals can be used to procure the block exchanger, a tool capable of solving not just world hunger, but multiverse hunger. Speaking of hunger, 1% of viewers are apparently hungry. But 100% of viewers are currently going to subscribe at this current nanosecond. Anyways back to what I am talking about. When I stick a crystal on top of these sticks, it magically creates the creative block exchanger. This copies a block, and pastes it onto any location I look at. Now most people would use this to further their own wealth and other corrupt causes. But I will use this to build society. And I had a sagacious idea on how to use this. I flew at the speed of apple juice, easily finding another chaos guardian, who I dispatched to unlock its chaos crystals. But why harvest them, when I can block exchange them? But to my disappointment there were no results. However, I was getting restlessly curious. I decided to do a bit of messing around in creative mode. I middle clicked the crystal, and pure chaos was now in my pockets. My plan now is to create the most awe-inspiring chaos crystal house. And what better place to do this than in this populated village. I began constructing my masterpiece with chaos crystal upon chaos crystal. After a while, my new residence was done, and I stepped back. That will be enough creative mode testing. This came with several side effects but it was beautiful. The excruciatingly loud chaos crystal ambience also matched the visual quality of the house. Some villagers had different opinions though. And something was bothering me. This chaos crystal backyard was not connected to the house. So I exchanged these crystals with a door. Now the masterpiece is truly a master and a piece. Suddenly, the ground under me began shaking. I was currently using my brain to determine why. That was when I remembered that destroying chaos crystals causes reality to break down around it. And the door had technically destroyed a chaos crystal. I tried to collect the leftover chaos crystals to save some profit. The problem is that I was experiencing a Graham's number magnitude earthquake and couldn't hit anything. But I can probably sustain my life as long as I got away. Suddenly, the ground disintegrated below me, with a crater that was powerful enough to shatter bedrock and explode in every other direction. Time around me almost slowed to a halt, and I was crippled by some invisible explosion force I guess. But overall the destruction was not that bad in the end, but I realized that the explosion destroyed the crystals I failed to save, leading to a chain reaction that would set off a few hundred more explosions. I could already see about 4 new shockwaves that rubbed away at the crater. And then the other 400 explosions happened. The rough crater was blasted into a bunch of organized rings. And time completely stopped. And just when I thought it was not over, my screen had an epileptic attack, showing that the chaos house explosion was less over than I thought it was. All because of a door. This world had basically been ended. I was planning to retire after this contretemps. But then I remembered. The difference between me and a billionaire, is we are not the same. I loaded up a backup of this world. And now, I was going to balance out the chaos crystal incident with a final improvement to society. The Draconic Reactor. The most challenging thing to create, but worth it because of free energy. The reactor system requires reactor stabilizers, the reactor core made from chaos crystals, and yet another stabilizer to make sure that the reactor doesn't go monkey mode. With these reactor constituents, it is time to construct the aforementioned reactor system. The current base area was too cluttered for reacting though, so I decided to relocate to the top of the nether roof, where there was practically infinite space for my future projects, including the reactor system. But safety first. I charge up the reactor force field, which makes sure that an unfortunate explosion will not happen. And to begin the reaction, I dumped an awakened draconium and exerted a force on this button, aka clicking. It then made a series of cool noises and became some cool colors. 
Apparently this reactor was a miniature sun, so unsurprisingly, the amount of energy made by this was cataclysmically high. It was still safe to touch though. And this made me wonder. Instead of just one reactor, why not use the exchanger, to make Ryo's number of reactors? Which will greatly increase electricity of society. I activated these reactors one by one, and the sounds of reacting echoed through the dimension. But then, I noticed that one of the reactors made a weird noise. Apparently, the energy storage supporting the reactor had expired. I reacted to this information by spamming batteries everywhere. Then I turned around and saw that every other reactor was also about to blow up. I flew to each one of them to delay the inevitable with more leftover batteries. And for some reactors I came just a few seconds before meltdown. Eventually I decided to just put all of my capacitors everywhere and every time. After doing this I took a step back and saw that all reactors were back to being healthy males except these two societal outcasts. At this point I decided to shut it down since I had no other options, and I proceeded to salvage it, which made the reactor give me a shower of lava. So I didn't have to take a shower today. I tried this with the other reactor, but I accidentally broke the stabilizer of the reactor behind me. This information went from my eyeballs to my brain, and I immediately switched from anger mindset to pure trepidation mindset. Due to the reactor now being unstable, this triggered a meltdown in unspecified moments. And it is unsure how big the explosion will be. So I simply accepted my fate. Unless. I loaded up a test world and tested ways to extinguish a deliquescing reactor. Kill all commands. Breaking it. Both attacks were shrugged off. The reactor had ascended all mortal constraints and evolved into a supreme being. In the playthrough world, the best I could do was escape. I distanced myself while looking back at the same time so I could see the fireworks. However instead of getting fireworks, I got something much worse. I saw the sunrise for the first time in the nether, which I miraculously survived. The blast escaped through this hole into the nether itself, leaving behind a big bowl of delicious lava that flowed onto the equally lava environment below. Due to these truly inconsolable mistakes, I am now officially retiring from playing Draconic Evolution. Anyways shout out to the channel members and watch my other stuff.